Okay, so for this program, um, I actually found this online on YouTube, but I couldn't, after searching and searching, I couldn't find it again, so I'm just going to remake it. This one, what we're going to do is we're going to make a program to reduce radicals. So I called it Rad Read or Red. Um, so it's got a little bit more advanced programming in it, and uh, this could easily be just put into a quadratic formula program if we wanted to get more advanced. So the first thing, and what you should probably do in most of your programs, is clear the screen. So go over to go into program, go into input output. I find it easier if you scroll up, it'll kind of cycle around. Clear home. Now we're going to do another thing. It's called clear um, draw. And the easiest place I found to found found to find that is in catalog. So just go into catalog and then press the C button for clear and then scroll down until you see CLR draw. It is, there it is, clear draw. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple spaces and we're gonna need to do that at the end also, or I'm gonna do another clear draw and clear home at the end. That way, anything that I have, um, I can get rid of so that I don't have to deal with that later. So I'm going to have a clear home and a clear draw. So second catalog, scroll to C, and then down, it was down about 10. Clear draw. All right, another thing we need to do is the functions that we have in Y equals, we need to turn those all off because we're going to be, in essence, drawing on the graph when we create our text. Uh, so this will probably be in two parts. This first part will be just setting up the beginning and the end, and then the second video will be the middle part. So we're going to turn our functions off here, and then on here, and then in the middle will be our program. So go into Catalog. If you press F, it'll jump you down, and then we want to go to Functions, off. Functions off. There it was. Functions off. And then what I'm going to do is at the end of the program, I'm going to do functions on. So we're setting up a bunch of things that will help our program run, but we don't want that, we don't want to have to fix that by hand at the end of every program. So we're fixing that. So It'll clear everything, it'll turn off the function, and then at the end it'll clear everything and turn on the functions. One more thing we want to do is we want to turn our axes off here and then turn them back on at the end. So if we go down to a catalog, if we scroll down, uh, do, 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 do. there we go, we want to turn our axes off and all the way down at the bottom we want to turn our axis back on so go into catalog and scroll down and we're going to turn our axes back on so now we are ready to insert our program in the middle here um, we're at four minutes, I'll keep going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press second insert and add just a bunch of enters in here so that we got room to put our program in. So I'm gonna leave a space just so I know that this is all the beginning stuff and then I start my program. The first thing is we're gonna have uh, to ask someone what they want to uh, calculate. So we're going to display quotes and we're, I'm going to do square root of D close parentheses and then a question mark. Now I can never remember where question mark is so I know if you go into catalog and then push up it wraps you around and takes you back to there. So there's our first thing. It'll ask, what do you want to take the square root of? And then we're going to go into program, input output, input output, and we're going to prompt 
D. Next thing we are going to do is there's, so D is going to be what's left in here, and K is going to be the value that we take out. So that'll be the number out front. So when we start, we want to store 1 as K. So we're going to put 1 into K. So at this point, D is everything inside, and K is the number that has been taken out, which is at this point just 1. So here's where the, the programming part gets gets a little bit more advanced than we've done before. What we're going to do is we're going to do a for loop. So if we go down and pick number 4 for a for loop, what for loop does is it'll run for whatever variable we type in here from the beginning number to the ending number, which means whatever I type in here, it's going to run through it when i is 1 and i is 2 and i is 3, 4, and 5, and then it'll leave the for loop. While I am in that for loop, I want to do another for loop for some value of j from 2 to 10. Now what these are going to be are these are going to be the numbers what, that we're going to square and see if they go into this number d. All right, while we're in our for loop, we want to check to see if j squared goes into d. How we do this is we need an if command, and we want to know if there's nothing remainder, if there's no remainder when we divide it in. So we go into second test over to logic and pick number four, not. And we want to know if there's no fraction part when we divide. So we need not, and then here we put fraction part or f part. Go into catalog, jump down to f, and then we want f part. There it is. So this is so far going to say if there's no f part of d divided by j squared. Close, close. Then... So we pick then, go into program, stay there, and go to then. Then what's going to happen is we are going to actually divide d by j squared and store that as d. So now d has had that perfect square removed. we got to keep that. Oh, I didn't put enough spaces, so I'm going to insert a couple more spaces in here. We don't have much more left, so we don't need a ton of space. Um, we got to we have to remember that we took j out of it. So what we do is we multiply that k that was a one before times that j that we just took out and store that as the new k value. So that's pretty much it. It's going to run through this over and over and over and see if all these numbers go into d over and over and over. So now we have to end the then statement. So if we go into program, number seven is end. We have to end the first loop. So go into program and pick seven again. And we have to end the first loop. So program and then seven. I'm going to add a couple more blank spaces there. And at this point, we can just display so go into, um, and actually we're going to do display with a slightly fancier method here. We're going to use text. So go second, catalog, scroll down to text. Down, 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 down. Oop, one too far. Text. Now the first number is where it'll put it vertically. The second number is where it'll put it horizontally. I think that's a fine thing there, comma, and then what we're going to do is we are going to display the value of k, then we're going to display a square root symbol, so if we put that in quotes it'll display the square root symbol, comma, the value of d that's left. Close the parentheses, and we should be good to go.
So let's give this a try. Second, quit, go into program. I'm going to execute this program. Let's put in 20. And it did not display anything. Ah, I remember because I did not pause. Which means when we got to this point where it was displaying the text version of our answer, it immediately cleared the screen. Yep, text, and then it immediately cleared the screen. So what we need to do is put right here, we need to put a pause, which is in the controls. Where is it? Right there, number eight. We need to put a pause. So now if we run the program, we type in 20, it displays 2 root 5. Oh, I still have a stat plot on, which is why that's there. Um, and it's, at, it's waiting for us to stop the pause. So if I go into my y equals, yep, right there, that's where my plot 1 is on. So if I do this again, program, uh, go down, execute, let's type in 200. Oop, not yet. If we type in 200, it should give us 10 root 2. So there is a more sophisticated way of programming with for loops, if commands, and that text, which you can see makes a smaller um, image on there so you can fit more text on the screen.